Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in this video, we will see the different methods for generating the SSP signal. So there are three different methods or three different techniques for generating this SSP signal that are phase shift method, the selective filtering method and the third method which is also known as the weavers method. So in this video, we will learn about the first two methods and in the next video, we will see the third method. So as we have seen in the previous video, in a single sideband modulation, one of the two sideband is suppressed and only one is transmitted. That means in this single sideband modulation, either only a lower sideband or the upper sideband is transmitted. And in the previous video, we have also derived the mathematical expression of this single sideband modulation. So for the upper sideband, it is equal to mt times cos of 2 pi fct minus mht times sine of 2 pi fct where this mht is the Hilbert transform of the message signal mt and similarly for the lower sideband the equation remains the same but now there is a positive sign over here so with the help of this mathematical expression it is possible to generate this SSB signal so the first method is the phase shift method so in this method with the help of the balance modulator and the Hilbert transform block, it is possible to generate the SSB signal. So as you can see, these two blocks are the balance modulator. And with the help of it, it is possible to multiply the two signal. While these two blocks are the Hilbert transform phase shifters, which provides a phase shift of minus pi by 2. So the input to this first Hilbert transform block is equal to the message signal. Let's say, the output of this first Hilbert transform is equal to MHT. Similarly, the input to this second Hilbert transform block is equal to the carrier signal, which can be generated locally. So this block will provide a minus pi by 2 phase shift and at the output, we will get sine 2 pi FCT. So now if we see this first balance modulator, then it multiplies this message signal MT and this cos 2 pi FCT. So at the output of this first balance modulator, we will get this first term. Similarly, the input to this second balance modulator is MST and the sine 2 pi FCT. That means at the output, we will get this second term. And using the adder circuit, if we add these two signals, then we will get the lower sideband. On the other end, if we subtract this second term from this first term, then we will get the upper sideband signal. So in this way, with the help of the two balance modulator and the Hilbert transform phase shifter, it is possible to generate the SSB signal. And the same thing we can also see from the frequency spectrum perspective. So as you can see, at point A, we have a message signal MT. So let's say its frequency spectrum is equal to MF. Now when this message signal gets multiplied with the carrier signal cos 2 pi FCT, then at this point B, we will get this type of spectrum. That means the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus Fc. So this will be the spectrum of the signal at the point B. Now as I said, this minus pi by 2 phase shift block is actually a Hilbert transform block. So in the previous video, we have already seen the transfer function of this Hilbert transform. That is equal to minus J times sigma F. So the output after this Hilbert transform block is the multiplication of this transfer function and the signal MF. That means this negative side of the spectrum will get multiplied with the factor of J while the positive side of the spectrum will get multiplied with the factor of minus J. That means if you see the spectrum then it will look like this. So this will be the spectrum of the signal at point C. Now the second balance modulator multiplies the signal mh of t and the sine 2 pi fct. So if we take the Fourier transform of the signal at this point d, then it is equal to 1 divided by 2j times mh of f minus fc minus mh of f plus fc. That means this signal mh will get shifted by fc on the positive side and it will get divided by 2j. Similarly on the negative side, it will get shifted by fc and it will get divided by minus 2j. So on the negative side, 
because of this negative sign this portion will come on the positive side and this portion will get flipped to the negative side so this is the frequency spectrum of the signal mh of t times sin omega ct at this point d and we have already seen the frequency spectrum at this point b that means at this point b this signal mf will get shifted by plus minus fc so now if we add these two signals then these two portions will get cancel out and we will get the lower side bend similarly when we subtract this d from the b then these two portions will get cancel out and we will get the upper side bend so this is how with the help of the frequency spectrum also we have seen that how we can generate the ssb signal using this phase shift method now practically if we try to generate this ssb signal with the help of this phase shift method then there are some limitations the first thing is that this ideal hilbert phase shifter is unrealizable because if you see the ideal hilbert phase shifter then it requires the abrupt phase shift of pi at the zero frequency now although practically it is possible to design the circuit which can provide a minus pi by 2 phase shift to the signal but at the same time it is not possible to get a 180 degree of abrupt phase shift at dc frequency so for the signals which has a dc or the low frequency component like the signal which we have discussed earlier it is practically not possible to get the hilbert transform but for the signals which has a dc null or a very little low frequency component it is possible to perform the hilbert transform because for such signal since there is a no dc or a very low frequency component so we do not need to think about the abrupt phase change and for such signal even with the practical hilbert phase shifter it is possible to perform the hilbert transform that means this phase shift method will work for the signal which has a dc null or very little low frequency component now the second thing is that although it is possible to design a circuit which can provide a phase shift of minus pi by 2 for a wide band signal but actually if you see then to design such wide band phase shifter is very difficult that means if we try to generate the ssb signal with the help of this phase shift method then the complexity of the modulator will increase so that is all about this phase shift method so now let us see the other method which is most widely used for the ssb generation that is the selective filtering method so in this selective filtering method first using this balanced modulator this dsbs signal is generated and then by passing this dsbs signal through the band pass filter it is possible to remove one of the side band so let's say this is the spectrum of the message signal mt now with the help of the balanced modulator whenever it is multiplied with the cos 2 pi fct then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus fc and when we pass this signal through a band pass filter with a sharp cut off at the frequency fc then we can remove either a upper side band or the lower side band so in this case using the band pass filter the lower side band is suppressed and at the output we will get only upper side band similarly using the band pass filter we can also select the lower side band and we can suppress the upper side band and in this case at the output we will get the lower side band so in this way using the selective filtering method we can select either a upper side band or the lower side band and in this way we can generate the ssb signal so as we have seen the ideal band pass filter has a sharp cut off at the particular frequency but if you see the actual filters then they do not have a very stiff cut off and in fact they have very gradual roll off so if you try to suppress either upper or the lower side band using this actual band pass filter then we cannot fully suppress the unwanted band but suppose if there is a gap between this upper and the lower side band then still it is possible to suppress the unwanted band substantially and for that to happen the message signal should not have any dc or the low frequency component so if we see the spectrum of the voice signal then it is also very similar to that so this voice signal has a frequency components from 300 hertz to 3500 hertz so let's say 
we have a signal which is very similar to the voice signal that means it does not contain any dc or the low frequency component and if this signal is passed through the balance modulator then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus fc and now using the actual bandpass filter it is possible to select either a upper sideband or the lower sideband and now since there is a gap of 600 hertz between the upper and the lower sideband so even using the bandpass filter with a gradual roll off it is possible to select the particular band so in this case to avoid any interference from the unwanted band the filter should be able to suppress the unwanted band by at least 40 db now at the lower carrier frequency still it is possible to achieve that but at the high carrier frequency let's say at 1 megahertz it is difficult to achieve such sharp transition of 40 db in amplitude over the 600 hertz so in such case this selective filtering is achieved in the two stages so at the first stage this modulation is carried out at the lower carrier frequency let's say the carrier frequency is equal to f0 so if mf is the spectrum of the message signal mt then after the balance modulator the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus fc and as i said at the low frequencies still it is possible to separate a one particular band using the bandpass filter so using this first bandpass filter it is possible to select either a upper or the lower side band so in this case the upper side band is selected so after the first stage of modulation now the separation between the two band is equal to 2f0 and now we can treat this signal as a new baseband signal and now we can perform the modulation at the high carrier frequency so let's say now this new baseband signal is equal to ma and if we see the output of this balance modulator then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus fc and now using the second bandpass filter it is possible to filter out the one particular band so now since the gap between the two band is equal to 2f0 which is much higher than 600 hertz so it is possible to suppress the unwanted band even with 40 db of suppression so in this way with the help of two stages of selective filtering it is possible to generate the ssb signal so now if we consider the case of the tone modulation then using any of the two methods which we have discussed earlier it is possible to generate the ssb signal so now let us briefly also talk about this tone modulation case for the ssb signal because in the previous video we haven't talked about it so in the tone modulation the message signal only contains the one frequency component let's say the message signal is equal to cos 2 pi fmt and using the euler's identity further it can be written like this so if we take the fourier transform of this cos 2 pi fmt then we will get the two delta functions and when this message signal mt gets multiplied with the carrier signal cos 2 pi fct then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus fc so on the positive side we will have a two frequency components that is fc plus fm and the fc minus fm similarly on the negative side we have a minus fc minus fm and minus fc plus fm so this fc plus fm and the minus fc minus fm are the upper sideband components similarly these fc minus fm and the minus fc plus fm are the lower sideband components and in fact if you see this entire signal then it is the dsbsc signal now as we have seen earlier in case of the ssb signal either upper or the lower sideband is suppressed and only one band is transmitted so if we take the case of the upper sideband then mathematically this is how it can be represented so in the case of the tone modulation this mt is equal to cos 2 pi fmt and this mh of t is the hilbert transform of the signal cos 2 pi fmt so if we take the hilbert transform of the signal cos 2 pi fmt then there will be a phase shift of minus pi by 2 or in other words we will get a signal sign 2 pi fmt so now if you see this equation then it is equal to cos 2 pi fmt times cos 2 pi fct minus sin 2 pi fmt times sin 2 pi fct which is nothing but cos of 
टू पाई टाइम्स एफ सी प्लस एफ एम टी विच इंडिकेट्स द अपर साइड बैंड एंड दिस इज हाउ द स्पेक्ट्रम विल लुक लाइक एंड सिमिलरली फिस इज द केस ऑफ द लोअर साइड बैंड देन वी विल गेट कॉस ऑफ टू पाई टाइम्स एफ सी माइनस एफ एम टी सो इन केस ऑफ द स्टोन मॉडुलेशन इधर यूजिंग द फेस शिफ्ट मैथड और द सिलेक्टिव फिल्टरिंग मैथड इट इज पॉसिबल टू जनरेट द एस एस बी सिग्नल सो नाउ इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल सी द थर्ड मैथड विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द वीवर्स मैथड बट आई होप इन दिस वीडियो यू अंडरस्टूड द फर्स्ट टू मैथड्स फॉर जनरेटिंग दिस एस एस बी सिग्नल सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन और सजेशन देन डू लेट मी नो हियर इन द कमेंट सेक्शन बिलो इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो हिट द लाइक बटन एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल फॉर मोर सच वीडियोज़